Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today, it's a wonderful day because we're going to do our first reading from Prentice Mulford. Prentice Mulford, if you haven't heard of him, wrote one of the famous books in New Thought called Thoughts Are Things, also your forces and how to use them. Thoughts Are Things is an all-time masterpiece and probably one of the very first books that detailed the idea of the law of attraction and the idea that thoughts are things. But there's one particular chapter that I really wanted to bring into our discussion on the reality revolution, which is thought currents. If you check out my previous episodes, I've discussed a concept that is largely in reality transurfing called pendulums, which is referring to a concept where more than one person thinks a similar thought. It creates a sort of energetic entity that can draw energy and manipulate realities. It gets a little bit complicated, and when I had asked Frederick Dotson about the idea of the pendulum, which is discussed in the book Reality Transurfing by Vadim Zeeland, he def- referred to it more as waves. And the more I've started to understand it, there is a distinction between thought currents and pendulums. Thought currents, I don't believe, are conscious. They're just mindless movements of thought. And it's part of the reason why the law of attraction is working, because you attract thought currents or you can interact with thought currents. And so the discussion of thought currents is in thoughts or things. So I wanted to bring that discussion into this. And we may read other chapters from thoughts or things in the future. It's a wonderful book. Thought Currents. We need to be careful of what we think and talk because thought runs in currents as real as those of air and water. Of what we think and talk, we attract to us like a current of thought. This acts on mind or body for good or ill. If thought was visible to the physical eye, we should see its currents flowing to and from people. We should see that persons similar in temperament, character, and motive are in the same literal current of thought. We should see that the person in a despondent and angry mood was in the same current with others despondent or angry, and that each one in such moods serves as an additional battery or generator of such thought and is strengthening that particular current. We should see these forces working in similar manner and connecting the hopeful, courageous, and cheerful with all others hopeful, courageous, and cheerful. When you are in low spirits or blue, you have acting on you the thought current coming from all others in low spirits. You are in oneness with the despondent order of thought. The mind is then sick. It can be cured, but a permanent cure cannot always come immediately when one has long been in the habit of opening the mind to this current of thought. In attracting to us the current of any kind of evil, we become for a time one with evil. In the thought current of the supreme power for good, we may become more and more as one with the power, or in biblical phrase, one with God. That is the desirable thought current for us to attract. If a group of people talk of any form of disease or suffering, of deathbed scenes and dying agonies, if they cultivate this morbid taste and the unhealthy and ghastly, and it forms their staple topics of conversations, they bring in themselves a like current of thought full of images of sickness, suffering, and thoughts revolting to a healthy mind. This current will act on them and eventually bring them disease and suffering in some form. If we are talking much of sick people or are much among them and thinking of them be our motive what it may, we shall draw on ourselves a current of sickly thought 
and its ill results will in time materialize itself in our bodies. We have far more to do to save ourselves than is now realized. When men talk business together, they attract a business current of idea and suggestion. The better they agree, the more of this thought current do they attract, and the more they receive of idea and suggestion for improving and extending their business. In this way does the conference or discussion among the leading members of the company or corporation create the force that carries their business ahead. Travel in first class style, put up at first class hotels and dress in apparel as costly as your purse can buy without running into the extreme of foppishness. In these things you find aids to place you in a current of relative power and success. If your purse does not now warrant such expenditure or you think it does not, you can commence so living in mind. This will make you take the first steps in this direction. Successful people in the domain of finance unconsciously live up to this law. Desire for show influences some to this course, but there is another force and factor which so impels them. That is a wisdom of which their material minds are scarcely conscious. It is the wisdom of the spirit telling them to get in the thought current of the successful and by such current be born to success. It is not a rounded out success, but good is far as it goes. If our minds are from what is falsely called economy, ever set on the cheap, cheap lodgings, cheap food, and cheap fares, we get in the thought current of the cheap, the slavish, and the fearful. Our views of life and our plans will be influenced and warped by it. It paralyzes that courage and enterprise implied in the old adage, nothing ventured, nothing gained, absorbed in this current and having it ever acting on you. It is felt immediately when you come into the presence of the successful and causes them to avoid you. They feel in you the absence of that element which brings them their relative success. It acts as a barrier preventing the flow to you of their sympathy. Sympathy is a most important factor in business. Despite opposition and competition, a certain thought current of sympathy binds the most successful together. The mania for cheapness lies in the thought current of fear and failure. The thought current of fear and failure and the thought current of dash, courage, and success will not mingle nor bring together the individuals who are in these respective streams of thought. They antagonize, and between the two classes of mind is built a barrier more impenetrable than walls of stone. Live altogether in any one idea, any one reform, and you get into the thought current of all other minds who are carrying that idea to extremes. There is no reform but what can be pushed too far. The harm of such extreme falls on the person who so pushes it. It warps mind, judgment, and reason all on one side. It makes fanatics, bigots, cranks, and lunatics. Whether the idea involves an art or study, a science, a reform, or a movement. It connects the extremists of all people in such order and the current of mind, no matter what their specialties may be. Such people often end in becoming furious haters of all who differ with them, and in so hating expend their force in tearing themselves to pieces. The safe side lies in calling daily for the thought current of wisdom from the infinite mind. When that wisdom is more invoked, our reforms and organizations for the good of the whole will not run into internal wrangles almost as soon as they organize. As now conducted, the thought current of hatred of and antagonism to the oppressor and monopolist 
is admitted at their birth. This very force breeds quarrels and dissensions among the members. It is force used to tear down instead of build up. It is like taking the fire used to generate steam in the boilers and scattering it throughout the building. When people come together and in any way talk out their ill will toward others, they are drawing to themselves with tenfold power an injurious thought current. Because the more minds united on any purpose, the more power do they attract to affect that purpose. The thought current so attracted by those chronic complainers, grumblers, and scandal mongers will injure their bodies because whatever thought is most held in mind is most materialized in the body. If we are always thinking and talking of people's imperfections, we are drawing to us ever of that thought current and thereby incorporating into ourselves those very imperfections. We have said in previous books that talk creates force and that the more who talk in sympathy the greater is the volume and power of the thought current generated and attracted for good or ill. A group of gossips can never put their heads together without raking over the faults of the absent are unconsciously working a law with terrible results to themselves. Gossip is fascinating. There is an exhilaration in scandal and the raking over of our friends or neighbors or enemies faults is almost equal to that produced by champagne but in the end we pay dearly for these pleasures. If but two people were to meet at regular intervals and talk of health, strength, and vigor of body and mind, at the same time opening their minds to receive of the supreme the best idea as to the ways and means for securing these blessings, they would attract to them a thought current of such idea. If these two people or more kept up these conversations on these subjects, at a regular time and place, and found pleasure in such communings, and they were not forced or stilted, if they could carry them on without controversy and enter into them without preconceived idea, and not allow any shade of tattle or tail-bearing or censure of others to drift into their talk, they would be astonished at the year's end at the beneficial results to mind and body because in so doing and coming together with a silent demand for the supreme to get the best idea, they would attract to them a current of life-giving force. Let two so commence rather than more, for even two persons in the proper agreement and accord to bring the desired results are not easy to find. The desire for such meetings must be spontaneous and any other motive will bar out the highest thought current for good. The old-fashioned revival meeting or camp meeting, through the combined action and desire of a number of minds, brought a thought current, causing for the time the ecstasy, fervor, and enthusiasm which characterized those gatherings. The North American Indian worked himself into the frenzy of his war dance by a similar law. He brought to him by force of united desire, a thought element and current which stimulated and even intoxicated him. His sole desire was to bring on him this mental intoxication. The more minds so working in the same vein, the quicker came the desired result. The real orator in his effort draws to him a current of thought, which as sent again from him to his audience, thrills them so does the inspired actor or actress. They bring a higher and more powerful element of thought to themselves first, and this flowing through them acts on the audience afterwards. If you dwell a great deal on your own faults, you will by the same laws attract more and more of their thought current, and so increase those faults. It is enough that you recognize in yourself those faults. Don't be always saying of yourself, I am weak or cowardly or ill-tempered or imprudent. Draw to yourself rather the thought current of strength, courage, even temper, prudence, and all other good qualities. Keep the image of these qualities in mind and you make them a part of yourself. You have sometimes been beset, absorbed, 
and even annoyed for days in the thought of the suit of clothes you wanted to buy, the cut, color, and fashion of a dress, the selection of a bonnet or cravat, until you were nothing in thought but clothes, hat, bonnet, dress, cravat, or some other detail of life. You may not have been able to make up your mind what you should buy, and have then possibly been tossed about mentally on the billows of indecision for days. You have then got into the thought current of thousands of other minds continually in this mood of thought. The surest way for a young woman to become ugly is to be discontented, peevish, cross, complaining, and envious of others, because in these states of mind she is drawing to her the invisible substance of thought, which acts on and injures her body. It ruins the complexion, makes lines and creases in the face, sharpens the nose and transforms the face of youth into that of the shrew in very quick time. I'm sure that applies to men as well. I'm not moralizing here or saying you ought not to do thus and so. It is simply cause and result. Put your face in the fire and it is scarred and disfigured because of an element acting on it. Put your mind in the fire of ill will, envy, or jealousy and it is also scarred seemed and disfigured because of an element as real as fire, though invisible acting on it. All things that are evil and imperfect, such as disagreeable traits of character in others, things unpleasant to hear or look upon, should be gotten out of our minds as quickly as possible. Otherwise, if dwelt upon, they attract of their thought current. They will then become permanent spiritual fixtures, and these will in time materialize themselves into corresponding physical fixtures. If we are always keeping in mind the person doing some wrong thing, we are the more apt to do that very thing ourselves. Let us endeavor then, with the help of the supreme power, to get into the thought current of things that are healthy, natural, strong, and beautiful. Let us try to avoid thoughts of disease, of suffering, of deformity, of faultiness, a field of waving grain, or the rolling surf is better to contemplate than to pour over the horrors of a railway accident. We do not realize how much we are depressed physically and mentally by the incessant feast of horrors prepared for us by the daily press. We invoke in their perusal a thought current filled with the things and images of horror and suffering. We bring ourselves in this way in connection and oneness with all other morbid and diseased mind, which lives and reveals in this current. It leads not to life, but to disease and death. Neither others nor yourself are one particle aided by your knowing of every fire, explosion, murder, theft, or crime, which the newspapers chronicle every 24 hours. If we read books written by cynical, sarcastic minds who are so warped as to be able to see only the faults of others and at last unable to see good anywhere, we bring on ourselves their unhealthy thought current and are one with it. The arrow always tipped with ill nature and sarcasm is deadliest to him who sends it. In other words, the man who is ever inviting and cultivating this thought current is inviting the unrest, disease, and misfortune it will assuredly bring to him, and when we get too much into his mind, we invite similar results. You may be neat, careful, and methodical in your habits, exact and elaborate in your work, yet if you associate closely with those who are careless and slovenly, you may find in yourself a tendency to be also careless and slovenly, and a difficulty in resuming and carrying out your former neat, methodical, and orderly methods, because you have not only absorbed of the careless mind or the mind lacking patience to do anything purposefully, but the fragment of such mind so absorbed is acting as a magnet in attracting to you its like thought current. When an evil is known, it is half cured. 
Bear in mind, when you are in any unpleasant frame of mind, that a thought current of such disagreeable mood is acting on you. Bear in mind that you are then one in a sort of electrical connection with many other sickly and morbid minds, all generating and sending unpleasant thoughts to each other. The next thing to be done is to pray or demand to get out of this current of evil thought. You cannot do this wholly of your own individual effort. You must demand of the supreme power to divert it from you. We can more and more invite the thought current of things that are lively, sprightly, and amusing. Life should be full of playfulness. Continued seriousness is but a few degrees removed from gloom and melancholy. Thousands live too much in the thought current of seriousness. Faces which wear a smiling expression are scarce. Some never smile at all. Some have forgotten how to smile. And it actually hurts them to smile or to see others do so. Sickness and disease are nursed into fresher and fresher activity by the serious mood of mind. Habit continually strengthens the sad capacity of dwelling on the malady, which may be the merest trifle at first. People get so much in this current that woeful diseases are manufactured out of some trifling irritation in some part of the body. Many materials are helps to divert a thought current acting disagreeably on you. You may have daily a set of disagreeable symptoms. They may seem to come as adjuncts to the daily routine of life. The breakfast table, the furniture, the conversation, and even the persons immediately about you seem to recall them. Travel sometimes banishes them entirely. The sight of differing surroundings diverts that particular thought current. Material remedies may temporarily affect the same result. So may any sudden change of life or occupation, but all these are secondary aids to the supreme power. The thought current of fear is everywhere. All humanity fears something, disease, death, loss of fortune, loss of friends, loss of something. Everyone has his or her pet fear. It extends to the most trivial details of life. The streets are full of people who, if fearing nothing else, fear they won't catch a train or the next streetcar. The more sensitive you are to the impress of thought, the more liable are you to be affected by this thought current of fear until your spirit, by constant demand of the supreme power, builds up for itself an armor of thought positive to this current and one which will deny it access. You can commence this building in saying, whenever you are affected in the way above mentioned, or in any disagreeable fashion. I refuse to accept this thought and the mental condition it has brought on me which affects my body. You commence then to turn aside the thought current of evil. Everyone has some pet fear, some disease they may never have had, but always dread it. Something they are in special fear of losing. Some trifle, even but a word or sentence uttered by another, brings this pet fear to the mind. Instantly, through long habit, the mind reverts to this fear. Instantly, it opens to it, and the whole thought, volume, and current rushes to and acts on them. It acts and vibrates on that particular chord of your nature, which for years has sounded your pet weakness. Then, in some way, the body is affected disagreeably. There are myriads of different symptoms. The body may become weak and tremulous. There may be loss of appetite, tremulousness, a dry tongue, a bad taste in the mouth, weakness in the joints, drowsiness, difficulty of concentrating the mind, on your business and many other disagreeable sensations. Such symptoms are often classed as malaria. In a sense, the name is correct one. Only in very many of these cases, it is a bad atmosphere or current of thought 
which is acting on our minds, instead of the fancied bad material atmosphere. Unquestionably, an atmosphere full of vegetable or animal decomposition will affect many people. But some live for years in the midst of stagnant pools and swamps who never had malaria. Others far removed from such locations on high and dry ground do have it. They have taken on a thought current of fear. Place yourself in a house where there has recently been a panic or scare. Though you may know nothing of it, you were well and strong the day before. You arise in the morning and soon this whole train of disagreeable sensations affects you because the house or place is saturated with a thought current of fear. Put a fear on city, town, or country of some deadly epidemic or some great calamity and hundreds of the more sensitive who may have no fear of that epidemic or calamity are still affected by it disagreeably. That thought current affects them in their particular weak spot. A fanatic predicts some great catastrophe. The sensational newspapers take up the topic, ventilate it, affect to ridicule, but still write about it. This sets more minds to thinking and more people to talking. The more talk, the more of this injurious force is generated. As a result, thousands of people are affected by it unpleasantly, some in one way, some in another, because the whole force of that volume of fear is let loose upon them. Some are killed outright. Entirely unaware of the cause, they open their minds more and more to it, dwell on it. Secret. Put out no resisting thought until at last the spirit, unable to longer carry such a load, snaps the link which connects it with the body. The more impressionable you are to the thought about you, the more you are liable to be thus affected. But you can train your mind to shut out this thought. You can gradually train it to bar tightly this door to weakness and keep open only the one to strength. You can do this by cultivating the mood of drawing to yourself and keeping in the mood and current of thought coming of God or the supreme power for good. Impressionability or capacity to receive thought is source either of strength or weakness. Fine-grained, sensitive, highly developed minds today often carry the weakest bodies because through ignorance they are always inviting some of these currents of evil without any knowledge of their existence or the means of throwing them off. They are ignorantly either courting or exposing themselves to such current. Improper individual association is one chief source of such exposure. The finer feminine organization is more sensitive to every shade and ray of thought about it, good or bad. Men absorbed in their business generate for a time a certain positiveness which throws off the fear current, but this positiveness cannot always last. Women from this cause often suffer a thousandfold more in the privacy of their homes than men are aware of. The average man defines it as a woman's way or wonders why she is so full of nervousness vapors or notions of ill health as you place your reliance on the infinite mind to bring you out of all these agencies for ill that mind in some way will bring many material aids to help you out that mind will suggest medicines and foods and surroundings and changes not only to help you temporarily but permanently so that when you are cured you are cured for all time a cheerful buoyant hopeful mind, and no mind is cheerful, hopeful, and buoyant without being nearer the infinite than one that is depressed, sour, and gloomy. Be that the mind of your doctor or your friend will help you to get out of the injurious thought current. Regard such mind as a help from the infinite, but don't put your whole trust in that individual. Put the great trust in the supreme power which has sent you, the individual, as a temporary aid or crutch until your spiritual limbs are strong enough to bear you. The more you get into the thought current coming from the infinite mind, 
making yourself more and more a part of that mind exactly as you may become a part of any vein of low morbid unhealthy mind in opening yourself to that current the quicker are you freshened and renewed physically and mentally you become continually a newer being changes for the better come quicker and quicker your power increases to bring results you lose gradually all fear as it is proven more and more to you that when you are in the thought current of infinite good there is nothing to fear you realize more and more clearly that there is a great power and force which cares for you you are wonderstruck at the fact that when your mind is set in the right direction all material things come to you with very little physical or external effort you wonder then at man's toiling and striving working himself literally to death when through such excess of effort he actually drives from him the rounded out good of health happiness and material prosperity all combined you will see in this demand for the highest good that you are growing to power greater than you ever dreamed of it will dawn on you that the real life destined for the awakened few now and the many in the future is a dazzling dream a permanent realization that it is a happiness to exist a serenity and contentment without abatement a transition from pleasure to pleasure and from the great to the greater pleasure you find as you get more and more into the current of the infinite mind that exhausting toil is not required of you but that when you commit yourself in trust to this current and let it bear you where it will all things needful will come to you when you are getting into the right thought current you may for a time experience more of uneasiness physical and mental than ever this is because the new element acting on you makes you more sensitive to the presences of evil the new is driving the old out the new thought current searches and detects every little error in your mind before unnoticed and repels it this causes a struggle and mind and body are for a time unpleasantly affected by it it is like house cleaning a process usually involving a good deal of dust and disturbance the new spirit you call to you is cleaning your spiritual house there is no limit to the power of the thought current you can attract to you nor limit to the things that can he do through the individual by it in the future some people will draw so much of the higher quality of thought to them that by it they will accomplish what some would call miracles in this capacity of the human mind for drawing a thought current ever increasing in fineness of quality and power lies the secret of what has been called magic so here we have a very different discussion of the effect of thought on reality in the idea of thought currents opening yourself up to thought currents that have a creative power on your body and the world around you may help you to better visualize or understand what's happening so the idea of keeping your thoughts positive is also in another way it's similar to jumping into a river you would not jump into the dirty river and expect it to be clean if you jump into a river it's super dirty then you will expect all of the river to be dirty like that so when you jump into a thought current then it's going to be similar to that it may be different to what you were actually thinking at the time but the thought current which is very powerful and a powerful way of thinking about it as you can see when you listen to this particular chapter it's easy to think about what's happening in the present day I am not questioning any of the science with what's going on in the world right now with the number of different viruses or diseases but it's very easy for the media to treat it like a sporting event today they'll tell you how many deaths how many people have been found to have the virus and they will go through two or three minutes 
just naming off all of the things to fear then they will tell you about all of the different effects and how it feels to go through this and it opens up this thought current and it's created a pendulum in and of itself outside of the reality of the science of the virus and this thought current of fear could have an effect it's certainly causing all kinds of problems there's resistance to this thought current in some cases people are ignoring it and some people are trying to attack this fear and so as we learn in reality transurfing when you attack the fear when you go against something you're still giving energy to it so the thought current becomes more powerful in many of the discussions of thought currents you could replace the word pendulum but there is some distinctions to it it's easier to imagine it more like a current so it has a water-like effect to it so thinking of it in those terms may be easier to understand it than thinking of it as a pendulum but the key element of the pendulum is that if you voice opposition to the thought you're still tuning into that vibration of it so for instance in my Facebook group we don't talk about anything that's related to COVID simply because it's talked about everywhere else and we don't want to bring in those thought currents because once people start talking about it then it brings in these other thought currents and you can only choose to do that it's tough one of the interesting things is the way that the media is structured right now the thought current uh, is related to what people are reading and a lot of news that you find today which is free is the fake news or the false news or the distorted or politicized news and all the really factual news is behind paywalls so if you want to get more factual and better news you have to get a subscription to New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or any number of those magazines so these different thought currents are quite different so there's a large number of people that are on these thought currents of fear through distorted news media and we can clearly see the effects of this just by watching the news which we shouldn't be doing in the first place so does this idea of thought currents change the way you think of the group mind one word I've used now a lot in recent episodes is the infinite mind the vast mind the supreme mind this idea of a larger infinite mind is very powerful to think of the larger godlike structure of the universe as a mind seems to have a the metaphor of it seems to be more descriptive and helping you to understand what's going on when you are evaluating reality I would love to get your interpretations of that because this is the pretty much the first book written this is in the 1880s it's amazing a lot of the stuff he's talking about is being discussed for the very first time and I really enjoyed the way he discusses it and it does give you another filter to understand the importance of the way you think and the what you put your attention upon So I hope that this episode puts you into a positive thought current. And that's one of the things that's amazing about group meditations is it's an intentional way to enter into a thought current. And that is why I love those group meditations so much because it really does feel like we're entering into something greater when we do it at the same time. Anytime that you're listening to the podcast, the goal is to put you onto a powerful thought current like other people are thinking and the wonderful thing about the internet is that we can do this non-locally you could be in another country but by listening to this episode you enter into a thought current of being able to create your reality of positivity around you of seeing the gratitude of all things and that thought current can bump start you and move you into a better day that's what I've found is this kind of material 
gets me going. It helps me to reevaluate the way I'm thinking or remind myself of things that I already know. A lot of these teachings may sound repetitive if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, but that repetition is what we're experiencing anyway when we're watching the news and the radio and being programmed by things all the time. So I think it's good to remind yourself through different authors and different ideas of the same concepts because they're true. And when you now have heard 10th, 20th author talking about these concepts in the same way, perhaps then you'll start to believe it. It's hard to believe some of this stuff. This is not what we were taught in school. This is not what we were taught by our parents. We were not trained in the idea that we create our reality, that thoughts are things. We were told that we live in a random chaotic universe and that God lives out there somewhere in another place. And we pray to him as we get on our knees, this God in outer space somewhere, hoping that he will answer our prayers, and sometimes he does, and sometimes he doesn't. When in fact, every single one of our thoughts are prayers, and we are the ones answering our own prayers when we're creating our reality. And this training is hard to get to. In many ways, we're trained. It's not true. If you watch what's happening in the world, people know this power, and they're using it against us. They use this power of thought currents and they create thought currents in people to create fear, to create unrest, to change governments, and it is used all the time. You understand how thought currents now are used and you can start to see how others use thought currents against you. So go back and watch that episode on pendulums, read reality transurfing, and start to look at the interactive effects of multiple groups of people thinking about things and understand that thoughts are things. And when you think a thought, it becomes a part of a stream. You can imagine it just like water that's flowing. And you, when you throw that garbage into the stream of water, then it carries along and The amazing thing is these thought streams are attractive. You attract them. If you start thinking about something in particular, that thought stream will come to you post haste. So think about it right now. If you close your eyes, you can see all these thought streams all around you. Now, I believe that they all kind of join at one point, but that's for you to figure out in any case, I'm pushing you back into a beautiful thought stream of love and understanding and joy. I hope that all of your dreams come true and all of the love you have is multiplied. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com and welcome to The Reality Revolution. Revolution.